Hey everyone and welcome to episode 28 of Video Games Ahoy. My name is Jonathan Radford and today I'm joined by Dav Weeks. Hello. And Zach Hamilton. Hi. <laughs> you really had to think about it there, didn't you? No, it was just like, I was like, <laughs> Dav Weeks, there's no yeah, Dav no Gabe. Dav Gabe. If, if, you, if you are wondering where Dav Gabe is, sadly, he's, he's no longer with us. Um, Don't say that. No, <laughs> no stop. I, I, no, he's just he's on he's holiday not, he's on holiday he's just he's honest, a horrible thing he's not to like say with us today he's here next week though so it's absolutely can't fine. say it like that um, <laughs> uh, he, uh, he's uh he's having a nice time away he deserves it uh our, our dav he works really hard so uh yeah, dav if you, if you are listening we love you and we'll, we'll see you next week but how are you guys doing how, how are you doing very well thank you very much mr yeah. radford yeah it's all good here man it's all good the, how's the cosmo this week the Cosmo? Oh, the background. Oh, oh, I see. I thought you were the asking Aurora me about like, that you yeah, just like, yeah, just like, like what, what magazines are you reading this yeah. week? Zach? How's oh, it Cosmo? What, what was my yeah, podcast? How's it going? Yeah, it's all good. Do you know what? The main thing is it just means I don't have to tidy in here. I can just... <laughs> doesn't matter uh, what it looks like. Why. Yeah. That's why. It's pretty smart. Gotcha. Mm. Peep behind the curtain there. That's a very good shot, actually. Um, Joe, should we get into, should we get into the, the pod, guys? Should we, should we start talking about it a little bit? And then... Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, let's let's. So, if if you are listening to us for the first time, then hey, we are Video Games Ahoy. We uh we do we do a weekly podcast, and uh, we, we we've got some fun things over on that there patron. Uh, you can become one of our patrons if you head on over. Uh, there's lots of cool stuff we've got over there. Uh, we just did the uh, Video Games Ahoy Hall of Fame, um, which episode should be coming out very soon, hopefully in the next couple of days. So, if you are a patron, then please check that out. We um. Uh, th- those are actually some of my favorite things we do. Every, every, I mean, we only do them once a month, but like, they're really turning into one of my favorite things we do. I'm pretty sour, to be honest, because yeah. I haven't. I don't think I've won one yet. And I'm, no, and you I'm got. Upset. You got. Oh, no, I did. I did. No, you're right. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I got. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I will. I got yeah. one. I'm not yeah, saying which. Yeah, yeah. I, I just gave. I think I kind of just gave it away, but like, it's, it's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. You did, you did get that one. I was really glad that got in. Uh, I mean, I I gotta be honest. If anyone's gonna be salty, I was very salty about my last game yeah uh, i was yeah. like oh man that's fair enough I, but fair you know enough. what it's it's a, we live in a democracy we do and, and we do democracy fails it's that's, interesting that's, though that's doing what... that doing that doing that segment because there's lots of games that i forget about like sometimes yeah. you guys bring stuff and i'm like oh yeah of course like why didn't i immediately think to bring that 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 should be top of the list <laughs> but yeah uh if you do want to check that out please head on over to patreon uh you can uh join us for a pound uh, and and you'll get all those episodes for the hall of fame uh we're hoping to set up a discord as well soon as well uh which means it'll be, you'll be able to come and chat with us which will be you know we're just trying to grow grow the community we uh we just topped um uh well, just say top we just hit 100 uh, subscribers on youtube which is oh, great awesome. we've just been able to get our own name on youtube which is lovely uh and twitch is growing you know we, we considering that you know we, we started with nothing and we're we've got a nice little community growing which is which is great yeah. Uh, and as well as Patreon, lockdown projects. Yeah, it was, it, you know, it's 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 been lovely. Let's just say, it, leave it at that. Um, as well as Patreon, you can find us on the websites like Twitter and Facebook and YouTube if you want to check our faces out because we're on there as well. Uh, and like I said, with Twitch, we've been doing a lot of streaming recently. I, I did Red Dead Redemption 2 this week, but Zach's been doing a lot of uh, The Last of Us 2, which... When I tuned in the first two episodes was genuinely terrifying. Um, just because yeah. you're on permadeath, Zach. Yeah, it's um we're three deaths in. <laughs> we'll Going have a strong. Chat about, we'll we'll have a chat about that later, but um it's uh yeah, it's been good fun. So check us out on Twitch, like I said. Um we're hopefully doing a lot of streaming over there uh, over the coming weeks as well. Um and we're also proud to say that we're affiliated with Green Man Gaming. So if you do have any gaming needs and want to look for some delicious deals, then make sure you head over to the Green Man Gaming link in the description below um should we get into the news fellas should we get into the news tell us yes. what's happening uh, this is yes. uh this is <laughs> story time yeah uh, story time with yeah. the news we should get like a really cool opening like, duh, 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 duh. oh that sounded like something that sounded like zelda i've been playing super zelda this week That's <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> all right let's start off with a uh, cd project red's highly anticipated cyberpunk 27 2077 because it has been delayed again uh, uh, i did hear about 20, this 21 21 days to december 10th Andy Robinson, rep- Andy Robinson report. It marks a third delay for the game this year after it slipped from its originally targeted April release to September and then from September to November, which is 
pretty crazy. Uh, in a joint statement released on Thursday, CD Projekt Red co-founder Martin Iwinski and head of studio Adam, I think it's uh, Badowski, said the uh, biggest challenge facing the studio was shipping the game on current gen, next gen, and, and PC simultaneously. Um, the big issue, he says those three, but the biggest issue I'm seeing is the current gen consoles. It's not really an issue for next gen and PC because those are the ones they've been working really hard on. It's the current gen and specifically the baseline PS4. Which is, which is what I'm going to be playing it on, so it's probably going to be jank, but there we are. Uh, he said, we're aware it might seem unrealistic when someone says that 21 days can make any difference in such a massive and complex game, but they really do. We feel we have an amazing game on our hands and willing to make every decision, even the hardest ones, if it ultimately leads to you getting a video game that you'll fall in love with. Uh, the game had gone gold, which meant that the final copy, the hard copy of the game, which, you know, they copy from, had actually gone out. Um... But apparently they said on the country, this is the time, uh, what they said with regards to this is that on the country, this is the time where many improvements are being made, which will then be distributed via a day zero patch. I, I mean, that's not, not in day one. So <laughs> I but I mean, that's, but that's just like, because you have to install a game now anyway. Yeah. So it's yeah, just exactly. like on the install. Yeah, so we'll just go the day, the it day before. It doesn't make any difference. Anyone that's downloading that, I imagine will go the day before, but anyone that's buying it will will be a day one mm. um so the one thing i'll say about this is that we've we spoke previously about um cd project red and um the fact that crunch is such a big thing now for i i, I do, there's a part of me that going oh great they've got more time which is what you would normally think however i've this is not normally the case and this is something i've been reading a lot about recently because the i i feel very strongly about 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 crunch because some people think and it, it, I guess it's because I feel the same way and I'm going to branch out a little bit into the acting world a little bit that people assume that just because it's your job it has to be your entire life and I don't yeah. believe that to be the case just because you love doing your job doesn't mean that it should be your life and we shouldn't have expectations that people doing a hundred you know like 80, 80 hours a week is, is okay when you're doing something you love I disagree with that entirely like your life is not does not revolve around something that you enjoy doing, even if that, some people enjoy doing that. The, the problem is, though, of course, like it's not even just like the external expectation, but the internal expectation. You're yeah. sitting there as, as you know, these guys are sitting there, or you know, these people are sitting creating these amazing games. But um, you know, it becomes their own, you know, their own sense of like, this is yeah. my identity. This is what I want to do, and and like, it's not good for you. Like, it's no. got, it's got to be bad for your health to be working, you know, that yeah. hard, even though on on one element of it, like, you are still, you know, the one pushing forward. Mm. It's it's interesting as well, because we spoke about this subject previously. We talked, we, we're speaking about CD Projekt Red and the crunch they've been going through. And I've read so many things since then, specifically with, with this game, where people have been saying they've been working 80 hours for months. And that's just not, it's not, it's, it's, it, it's not living standard. You can't expect people to do that consistently. And I think another thing as well, which which is really sad, is again I listened to a podcast um, about this recently, specifically on the subject of crunch, where they were saying that you it's all to do with upper management and they're mismanaging the the process that goes along. It's not even like project managers. It's 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 a but people above them going, yeah, we need it out next year, and that's it. And it's this twenty one days won't stop crunch. Because if crunch if crunch had worked previously, the game should have been done by now. Mm. All it means is an extra twenty one days, three yeah. weeks of crunch. That's all that's going to happen. That yeah. nothing's going to slow down or be managed better. It's just going to be twenty one days of crunch. And I don't I don't know that someone someone actually made a point of this the other day. Um, well, how do we stop crunch in video games? Because there are a lot of people who who play video games who who, who accept it. Do you know what I mean? They accept, like mm. because they go no, but it's they're trying to make the best game for us. I work really hard in my job. It's like, but again, you shouldn't have to. Mm. You know, you're that's me. Perfect. But it, it's not really. You know? It's not really. It seems to me that you, if you can't make a profit, because really what it comes down to is profit. You know, yeah, profit, really, if they yeah. if they wanted to make the best game, they'd give it another year. They'd come. Yeah, they'd exactly. come back twenty twenty one. But really, what it comes down to is profit, because you know, another year means a lot more money. And if you can't afford to pay people a living wage on yep. living hours, you don't have a business. Mm. You no longer Absolutely. have a business. Just in the same way that if if I, um, you know, if I can't make money doing what I do, then it's not it's not a business. Mm. It's yeah, it's something else. It, yep. It's but it's definitely not a business. You know, the, the, we have the same conversation about you know like uh, the minimum wage um, across the world. You know, people yep. say, oh, if we pay them, if we start to have a minimum wage then 
then I won't be able to make a profit. Right, well, then you don't have a business. Yeah, yeah. You no longer have yeah. a viable business. That's fine, but you don't have a business. Um, well, it's, go away. It's, again, branching yeah. off, that's a really good point, and branching off from that as well. It's like the situation with Amazon. You know, Jeff, yeah. Jeff Bezos is like the most, is, is the richest man in the world. He has billions. I know we're going quite off topic here, but like he's he's getting making that money of people at the bottom barely being yeah. paid a living wage. And I, again, with to be fair with CD Projekt Red, people who are working um, extra hours are getting paid for it. And, you know, I, I, I get that. But at the same time, there needs to be, I think there needs to be a fundamental shift in gaming. I need, it needs to happen soon where people go, you know what, we'll prioritize, you know, both things can be true. We can make work really hard on a game, but then also you can go home to your mm. family and make mm. sure that you have a life because it's, that's as important, especially when you hear Absolutely. stories of people in CD Projekt Red. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking specifically about them countless other companies do this but um you have just hear stories you go on twitter of people you know doing crunch for like 80 hours a week and they just look ill because mm. they worked worked like crazy i know this is a very heavy topic to me to kick off the podcast with but it was the no it's really story. i not, think it's really I like important to talk over, about it like, yeah get it get and get those out of the way and i think one thing as well is, is showing support as well so if, if if you do feel the same and you are listening to this uh the best thing we can do really is because not buying the game only impacts the people working there as well you know they're likely to lose their job if the game doesn't sell as well they're likely to get paid less so i think the best thing people can do is just is just talk about it mm. you know twit you know tweets you know go on facebook talk but i think that's the most important thing but yeah um i'll leave it there just because um we'll move on to some other stuff now because um i want to I talk about i think that's the heaviest topic we're going to talk about <laughs> and everything else i kind of like to start off heavy and then just get a little oh, yeah, I like to get a bit lighter and then we're into the podcast you know if people have stuck with us at this point you think okay yeah, yeah they've, the come through, they've come through yeah. the filter <laughs> yeah they come through the hardest part um so the next topic is uh, Wesley LeBlanc of IGN has written that Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO Jim Ryan says PlayStation 5 demand appears to be very considerable based on the number of pre-orders in the United States. Ryan spoke to Reuters about the consumer demand for the PS5 on October 27th and said the demand as expressed by the level of pre-order has been very, very considerable. Ryan said that Sony pre- pre-sold as many PS5s. This is the thing. Ryan, Ryan said that Sony pre-sold as many PS5s in the p- first 12 hours of pre-orders in the United States as was sold in the first 12 weeks of pre-orders for the PS4. Wow. Now, yeah. wow. We know that like every, we know in theory every generation should sell more consoles as consoles become you know, more. there's more people who buy them you know, there's more generations of people that buy them you know, like when we were growing up, our grandparents would have bought them but you can legitimately have grandparents who grew up playing, you know the, 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 the NES. So like it, as as we get older, more people are going to buy consoles naturally. Um, but at the same time, that is ridiculous. That is twelve crazy. hours compared to twelve weeks over the course and, of what sev- uh, seven years. So uh, well, what it's saying is that um, so uh, uh, the PS Five has no no no, no sorry no I'm saying um, PS Four was seven years ago seven right years ago. yeah seven years ago it's, yeah, just yeah. Not, it's not realistically that long it's ago. not a big big chunk of time to be so making that much progress twelve hours yeah um, but to, to be fair I, I think. With regards to the PS5 in, uh, in particular, the PS4 smashed it so hard mm. um, that you know Xbox, we we knew the Xbox has a lot of a lot of catching up to do, and yeah, it seems like that is the case. But it's off to a flying start. Um, I I desperately want to get a PS5 on um, uh, you know when it comes out, but I've tried looking everyone. There's just I don't think there's any way that's going to happen now. No, man. But yeah. No, um, no. All right, let's let's uh, move on to Xbox head Phil Spencer had a recent interview with Magnus Groth Anderson over on Game Wait, Reactor. Wait, who's Phil Spencer? <laughs> <laughs> Every week he gets a bit. Of, uh, well, well, it, it's he gets Dab. a lot of airtime. Yeah, on this. yeah he does. <laughs> this is for Dab. Somewhere Dab is like yeah. you know he's, he's <laughs> yeah. giving us the, the high five. Uh, he was asked a lot of questions uh, and elaborated on some of those questions he was asked in the interview with Kotaku last week. He was asked if the company's first party software lineup has a weakness. Which he responded with, if we look at what people are playing on Xbox, what Game Pass subscribers are playing, I think what is missing from our portfolio is casual content with broad appeal. E-rated content, to use uh, an ESRB rating, is not a strength for us. We obviously have Minecraft and we have some other franchises, but when I think about expanding the creative uh, palette that our teams have, I think that is critically important. What first comes to my mind is last week we were talking a lot about Banjo. They already have Mm -hmm. a ready-made, like or two characters, but you know what I mean? Like a core group of characters that are well-known, already have a base, 
like um of a style of gaming or a style of genre that they could easily just go right here here's banjo that would come that banjo in my opinion would compete with at least crash bandicoot i know crash isn't playstation anymore i he definitely wouldn't compete with mario because that's just a whole other level but like banjo kazooie they're, they're those two are ready to go you know what i mean like that's perfect i i think surely they should use this as a way to to, to get some of those e-rated games but how do you guys feel about that I think it would essentially be an Xbox like Ratchet and Clank, you know what? Yeah, it could easily yeah, be that. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think it, that is that is a good point. That's what they're missing. Zach, what were you going to say? It, it seems to me though that E-rated games have changed quite a lot since the Banjo Kazooie years. I mean, like mm-hmm. at that time, the the mascot platformer was like everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. You had, you know, so- Sonic was literally made for Mario. Um, yeah, he was. Yeah, and uh, you know, so, and we and and Crash Bandicoot presumably in the same vein. You had Bubsy. You know, you had all kinds of like people were trying to make the mask, and I think, I think now though, the you know, kids are the kids these days. <laughs> uh, I mean, with the games that are popular among the e, you know amongst the E-rated stuff, a lot of them are um, massively multiplayer. Yeah, you that's know? true. Yeah. Um, not, because not the expectation on, is that you're going to yeah. play with friends or mm. strangers. Um, you know, and particularly right now, the the potential for connecting with you know uh people online is kind of really important yeah um I, so I, I don't know i i i feel like they're gonna have more more luck if they can just keep cranking out stuff you know like like fall guys like yeah, yeah, uh yeah. Fortnite. um can kids play among us is that too violent yeah or? they do it was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they, they play among us you know i mean it, that, that just seems seems the more likely scenario from here on in, especially with with the way that ukulele, you know, uh, people responded to ukulele, it seems as though, yeah. not obviously that had its own problems, you know, but maybe had it been more polished, it might have got a better response. Mm. But I don't know, man. It seems like I, 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 um, I think it's interesting because I think, like, I think a lot of people felt like because uh, you make a really valid point in that um, it's Mario is kind of his own thing. Like specifically Mario and Sonic to a degree, like they're there because they are almost like the, gr- the you know the grandfathers of video game yeah. mascots. Mm. And mascots aren't really the same. No, definitely now not. Uh, because most games, like you say, are especially for when kids are playing them, they're not that kind of. Then they don't have the same. It, it's not about single player experiences. I would say for kids, it's about you know that's not yeah. where the money is these days, is it? Um, saying that though, I mean Crash Bandicoot. They, they, they were really worried about making a new Crash game because they didn't think there was going to be a, a broad enough appeal. And, like, bringing the trilogy, the Crash trilogy out, they, that sold tremendously well. That's constantly yeah. in the um, uh, the top ten. Uh, in the UK, at least. It's constantly in the top ten. Um, so, I don't know. I think with Banjo as well, it, like, it, it would attract... I think it would attract a lot of people. I think a lot of people would support it. I mean, we'll get on to the next, like, uh, we'll get into the next bit um, shortly. But just before that, I want to say, Im- imagine if they brought like a banjo, and then they did bring it to, to Switch. A lot of those Nintendo. Well, I suppose would, in a way, you that. could you could do exactly what Crash what Crash did. You have another yeah. team, a, a new team, render the original two games mm. in you know full HD with nice new models yeah. and all that stuff. And if that goes well, do a banjo three. Yeah, because did you guys play the ban- the third banjo game? Nuts and bolts. Oh God, no! <laughs> yeah, I because I, I, I remember watching clips. It looks of that horrendous. It, it does look horrendous, and it just it looks terrible. But um, it looks like one of those games that like is like weird. You know, there's those weird games that are weirdly colorful, yeah, but somehow yeah. somehow so so dull. Do you know what I mean? I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna name any names because there's a few games that I would put in that category that I'm not sure everyone would agree with. But um, <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, all right, let's let's move on as well. Um, so, Destruction All Stars has been delayed out of the PlayStation Five launch lineup into February 2021, where it'll be available free for the PlayStation Plus subscribers for two full months. Um, I don't think this is weird. It's weird because I don't think it's that big a deal. It's, when Halo left the launch lineup, what are we kind of really left with? I think it's Demon Souls now and Spider Man Miles Morales. I'm just like, I know they're both both on PlayStation, but the only one, the only real game that if you you desperately need to get a PlayStation Five for, I know that um, is is uh, Demon Souls. Miles Morales is on the PS4. Like it, it just seems to me now that 
Didn't Demon Souls come out in like 2006? Yeah, it's a came out. Oh, that's I mean. It's a remake, isn't it? So like, it's not even a new game. Yeah, it, I, I, it, it does make me. It does make me think. Yeah, I, I could probably. I know I said earlier this out of podcast. I want to PS5, but that's just purely because I want to be able to play my old PlayStation 4 games on a, yeah. on a system that was in would in theory be able to boost a lot of the the game's graphics and stuff. Um, especially like I, when I was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 last night, I was just like. This game looks gorgeous. I can't wait mm. to see what it looks like on next-gen consoles. But, uh, yeah, so it's been um, delayed until next year. I mean, yeah, that's that's the next one. Um, so, uh, something really cool this week, and I've mentioned many a time how much Rosie loves Fire Emblem. Um, Fire Emblem 1 is being released and localized for the very first that's time right. on the Switch. Yeah. So, um, so, this is from Nintendo. I'm just going to read out this little blurb from Nintendo. So, mark 30 years of the Fire Emblem series. Meet Marth and recruit some of the most beloved Fire Emblem characters in their 8-bit glory in, the, in Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade of Light for Nintendo Switch. While players across Europe and North America were first introduced to Marth as a fighter in the Super Smash Bros. series, the story of this bold and courageous prince actually begins in Japan's first entry in the Fire Emblem franchise, Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade of Light. The game's new release for Nintendo Switch features its first English language localization, bringing to life the tactical RPG classic for a new generation of players. This release will also include features like rewind, fast forward, and save states, which allow burgeoning tacticians to approach the challenge at their own pace. Um, there, there was also this game was remade for the DS, but the original has never actually been localized. I actually bought the um, the original on the DS. Where is it? Have I got it here? Oh, I've got something to show you guys later in a bit. I, I think I've shown you already, but I'm, I, I'm not sure people have actually seen it at home, but um, i got it here. But yeah, so I actually bought that on the DS for Rosie last week, but I'm definitely going to try it, um, try out the old classic, especially because it's like, I think it's like £6 currently. All right, okay. Which is pretty, no, it's, it's not bad. I mean, that's, that's pretty good. Um, the only problem is that uh, it's doing that classic, whatever, for whatever reason, that current classic Nintendo thing, uh, you can only buy it until the 31st of March next year. And Why? It's gone. I don't know. What I, I, is this? I don't know. They've done like because they Mar- Nintendo have previously done this, so it's not a new thing they're doing. But like for whatever reason, the last like three months they've just done it to pretty much Mario Thirty Five, the Three D uh, All All Star Edition. That's limited. I mean, do, do you think it creates a sense of urgency? Do you think it makes people go like, that's, "Oh, I don't want, I don't want to play now, but I want to play someday." Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but that's then they never play it. Well, uh, the Three D Collection is actually it's is one of the best selling titles for Nintendo this year. Um, I find that so weird. I don't and it's get like, that at all. Well, it, it's it's this it's that. I mean, to be fair, for me, I'd never played Galaxy, so it was it was like that was a new game for me. Yeah. Um, mm. But I wanted to play, and I wanted to play Sunshine. But for anyone that has played all those three games, I guess, yeah. I think that's the thing. To be fair, like, we, urgency, we, 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 were, we were talking about the 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 thirty fifth. Um, uh, Zelda thing, and we yeah. were talking about maybe it'll be like I don't know, like Ocarina, Wind yeah, Waker, yeah. and Twilight Princess, or whatever. Um, no, 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 no. But if it was okay, so with those three, I don't really care. But I guess to be fair, since I never played Skyward Sword, maybe I would be inclined, yeah, to get because I'm never going to play it on the Wii. Realistically, yeah. at this stage, I don't even know where my Wii is. <laughs> it's I, um, somewhere. <laughs> I will always stand by the fact that I think Skyward Sword gets a bad rep because mm. loads of people didn't like the motion controls. If you take them... I know it's hard to say if you take the motion controls away because that's <laughs> fundamentally the game. But they were never that bad. I never thought they were like... They're, they're, so if you forget about the sword and the shield... <laughs> if you forget about the it's combat... Not a game. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's super fun. Um, no, it, 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 I always felt like... I enjoyed the story. I thought it was a great story. It was... It was very colorful. Very, you know, it was it was, it was good fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, with, with regards to like I said, um, Fire Emblem, it's yeah, it's going to be limited edition. Uh, it, it does actually have a really awesome physical uh, collection that's coming out as well, which looks amazing. Uh, so check that out if you want to. Uh, and speaking of Zelda, going back to Zelda, Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity is apparently getting a demo at some point today. So by the time people listen to this podcast, it probably has already cool. come out. It was rumored during the week and this morning Nintendo UK actually put out a news story saying that it was playable, though no demo was actually linked to the game in the eShop and then uh, that um, link was actually then taken away. So you, it, it's gone, but it makes me feel like at some point today there's going to be a demo. Uh, saves will transfer over as well, which is really cool and I like it when people do that. I mean, to be fair, I like it when companies give demos. I, I think most yeah. games should have demos because... There are so there have been a few not all the time and I do a lot of research when it comes to games but like there've been some times when I played a game I bought a game played it for five hours and gone I wish I hadn't bought this yeah and it's like 
I can't really get a refund, and I guess I could sell it, but I wish I just hadn't spent m- that money in the first place. But if and, and if the developers are confident in their design, yeah. like they should be. Like if it was me and I was like really proud of something, I'd be like, yeah, have a little yeah, look at it, and I then you buy. But if if it's something bad, like I make bad stuff sometimes, I'll be like, I'm just gonna put it out. Like I'm not gonna tell yeah. anyone. You know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, and I, I, that's a really good point. I, I think one of the best demos I've ever played, and I actually haven't bought the game purely because like. I know how long it's not because the game is bad and not because I don't like it because I know how long the game is and I'm like I don't know if I can invest that time is Dragon Quest um 11 on the Switch that oh, game yeah. gives you the first 10 hours first wow. 10 hours of that game I mean I've just played I've just completed Ocarina of Time and I did that in 17 hours so like I mean that's like half the length of me playing Ocarina of Time which is mad but yeah uh, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity um there's hopefully going to be a demo at some point today but probably already come up by the time you listen to this podcast anyway but check it out uh dav weeks did you say you were gonna did you were you gonna buy age of calamity were you interested at all no 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 this is probably when i'm gonna would you sit out would you play the dynasty demo? warriors i'd play the demo absolutely yeah. gonna would, play the demo do you reckon that's gonna persu- would do you reckon that could persuade you it could yeah. if i enjoy it that's... but like the only comparable gameplay that i've played was dynasty warriors yeah. all those years ago and i can't say i liked it no it's so from the footage that i've seen of the game it does it does seem a bit more grounded but it's still that sort of like just slashing your way and all it, it's it, it is fun i mean i'm personally uh, i'm probably gonna play that game on the easiest setting and just enjoy the story like that's that's yeah. probably what i'm gonna end up doing just because i don't really i don't know it, it might it might feel different it might not feel as as Dynasty uh, Dynasty Warriors Z, I guess, but we'll see how it goes. Um, gents, do you know? Sometimes I like to end this uh, new section by telling you a new TV show is coming out based on a video game. Well, <laughs> Assassin's Creed is getting a live action Netflix series oh, um, is it? after the success of The Witcher. Uh, the show um, is uh, so it's going to be executive produced by Mythic Quest Jason Altman and Ubisoft TV boss Daniel uh, Krenik. Now. I will say, Mythic. Uh, have you guys seen Mythic Quest? By the way, no. It's really mm. funny. Like it's re- It's made by the same guys as uh, It's All Sunny in Philadelphia. Um, oh. So definitely check it out. It's but it's on Apple TV. Um, but D- Dav Weeks, do you have Apple? I don't have Apple TV now. Oh, I, well, I think you can get a free trial of Apple TV because you are an Apple customer. Should yeah, definitely try I'll and check. Yeah, get. definitely try and check it out. It's it's worth it just for Mythic Quest. It's on there. It's it's really good. Okay. Um, it's a really good show, and it's about video games. Uh, the whole show is about like a video game company, kind of like uh, World of Warcraft. Um, right. they, they've got their own version of that. It's called Mythic Quest. It's just really funny. It's just a really funny show. But yeah, Assassin's Creed. Now, I know there was a film that came out of Assassin's Creed. I, I never saw it, but apparently it was garbage. Um, yeah. But I actually think a TV series could be a better way of doing it. Um, how do you guys feel? Because... There's been a lot of like. I Who's mean, it I, about? Like, what's what? What year? I, I don't yeah, think they've said story. Yeah, I, I don't. I, maybe they'll just make their own like version in the world. So they'll just pick another time and pick a yeah. place. I mean, I, the, the yeah. only character I ever really liked from the Assassin's Creed series was Ezio, yeah. and uh, I don't really know how you would do that. Um, you know, live action because who is it? Is it? Is it Roger Craig Smith or someone I who does his remember. voice? But it's a voice actor anyway, yeah, yeah, and I'm, yeah. you know, so, and it's not modeled around them, so it'd be very difficult yeah. to then translate that. Um, yeah, I'm probably not going to watch it. I'm going to be <laughs> honest. It'll be Altair, I guess. I guess they'll do that. Plot. Yeah, maybe, maybe it will be Altair. But um, it's interesting, and it's Netflix as well. I mean, we, I, I imagine we all have Netflix, so it's not. The Witcher was pretty good. I enjoyed The Witcher, but then I love. I love The Witcher Three, and I was when that came out. To be I fair, just everyone the loved The Witcher. I it know loads of people man. who are not into games who are like, "Yeah, watch The Witcher." I still haven't seen it. It's, it, uh, was, it was. I mean, it wasn't like Game of Thrones brilliant, um, but it wasn't. It wasn't bad. Me and Rosie both really enjoyed it, um, and it, Rosie actually bought the books because of it, which is great. Okay, cool. Um, that and that's it. Oh, well, actually, one thing before we leave um, the news, I should say, <laughs> not leave. Bye. Um, is <laughs> Uh, the Uncharted films just released um, a picture. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. We, um, did you guys see this? Did you? I mean, yeah, I, I know yeah. we're not. I know Zach specifically is not a fan of. I mean, but I do games. think Tom Holland's very good. You know, I like Tom Holland. And, I think yeah. I, and 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 I actually don't. One of the things I like the most about the Uncharted series is like some of the pithy dialogue. You know, there's a lot of like witty banter and stuff goes on. Yeah, I think yeah. it could work. I think Tom Holland actually is the right person to do it. Yeah. And if he's if he's in it for the long haul, you know, he'll grow yeah. into the role as it goes on. I yeah, I I think that's what I think that's what probably what it was. I think they 
because there was a couple of people who probably could have fit the role of Nathan Drake a bit better. And Nathan Fillion was one that's always been pushed. He does Absolutely. he does look like Nathan Drake, but that is the problem. Uncanny resemblance. If Nathan if Nathan Fillion was like ten years younger, then maybe he would have been asked to do it. Yeah. But he's, he's quite he's already I think he's in his fifties now. He would have been perfect though. He would have yeah, been yeah. so perfect. He looks like him. He sounds like it's... him. He acts like him. It, it would have been so perfect. But yeah, we'll see, we'll see how Tom Holland goes. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm... When I was playing the games actually recently, I kept forgetting that it wasn't Nathan Fillion. I kept being like, oh, it's <laughs> Nathan Fillion. <laughs> because he has that... done, cause he was in ODST, right? Uh, the Halo game, I think. I think uh, Nathan right. Fillion. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's I think it's his likeness and his voice. Oh, really? So it's kind of like playing um, a Halo game with Nathan Drake in it. <laughs> All right, Ted. Um, that that is the news, gents. Should we um, talk about any games you've been playing? Anything? Anything yeah, fun? Yeah, man. Yeah, sure. I've. Um, I. Funny enough, we were talking about demos. Mm. That's exactly what I was playing. <laughs> uh, Pikmin Three. Oh, how did how did you find ah, it? Ah, okay. Love it. Yeah, the reviews have just come out today. I'm not going to say. I yeah, mean, they, 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 it, people are loving it. Is basically what I will say. I want to what the scores are and stuff, but. Yeah. No. But um. So I played Pikmin One on the GameCube mm. forever ago, you know. And I loved it. I remember loving it back then. I was really hooked on it. And like I picked it up again, like downloaded ah. the demo, played it. And it, like, yeah, this is Pikmin 3, but the mechanics are all pretty much fundamentally the same. And I was like, I forgot how much I bloody love this game. I was going to say so that game, charming. That game seems like a perfect game for you, as I'm just because it's so like it's puzzly yeah it's puzzly it's cute. yeah yeah it's like ticks all the uh, dav yeah. boxes it's full of cheesy japanese type <laughs> sensitivities yeah um yeah uh so in the original game there were three races of pikmin mm. and in this one it's the demo i've only come across two and already one of them are rock pikmin <laughs> and they so they're not even they don't even look like Pikmin. They look like pebbles with eyes, and they're great. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Are you gonna and, buy? And they're great. I, I am tempted. I was gonna yeah. say because like I, it does, again, it does seem like a game that you probably would have yeah. paid, like really paid and enjoyed the time playing Pikmin. Yeah. I, I'm still on the fence because I think it's out tomorrow, the day after. Um, I can't mm. remember. I think it's on Friday. Um, I, I think I will get it later. Maybe not this week, but at some point. But how did yeah. you find it? How did you find the game? I love it. Yeah, it's great. It, it, and the demo was, I got to the end of it and I was like, eee, next bit. And then it went, ah, you can buy the game and we'll transfer uh, your save from the demo onto the game. And yeah. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so that's a good reaction to get at the end of yeah, a demo. It that's is. why demos exist. Exactly. It, I now really want to buy the game. Uh, that's, so the that, demo's done a great job. I think as well, like, the thing is, is like with demos and stuff as well, like, when I was a kid and we, uh, I used to go to like game shops. I know we're going off, we're not really off topic, but you know what I mean? We're talking about demos again. But like when I was a kid and we used to go to like game or electronic boutique or something, a store like that. Or um, I, one of my very first experiences, and I mentioned this the very first episode of the podcast, is going to Curry's or PC World, I can't remember which one it was, or Comet, I think it might have even been, and playing a demo, not a demo, but just playing Super Mario 64 because there was no demo at the time. So having an experience where you get to try it out, especially now where we're not really able to go out into shops as much i think demos are even more important right now yeah but, absolutely yeah i do, do do you reckon you will buy it i know you just said that you might yeah but... i mean i've got so many games that i have not completed and <laughs> yeah, i'd I feel bad like buying another game right now <laughs> before clearing my shelf a bit mm. but it's absolutely on my list yeah that's great i'm glad I'm it's glad. really really nice give it a go yeah, I I played um I played the, I played the demo as well like um uh, about a week or so ago and I was oh, just like, I played enough of it to go I don't know if I want to play anymore because I'm playing it so far up from the game that if I play anymore I might want to like play it tomorrow and mm. my knowing my brain I'll just forget about it and I'll just like play it like and it's gone and it's at the back of the queue and I've been playing yeah. Zelda for the last two weeks so like clearly it was just gone now. But awesome! How, uh, how far are you into your uh, your your Zelda run at the moment? Because you've been doing the three D the three D games, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, so do, oh, uh, shall I just go now? And you just you go. You just yeah, go into go it as yeah. a nice uh, little so, transition. Um, well, this is what I wanted to show you, and I'll show all the all the views as well. I think um I think I might have shown this before. My oh, brother. Oh, this is so cool! My brother made this. <laughs> how cool is that? I love so you can that. See that. My is it brother two separate made this. pieces. And it for is, the yeah. podcast listeners, what is it? Well, it's the it's the stone uh, from uh, Ocarina of Time. I think it's the first one, isn't it? The um, first the spiritual stone. Spir- first spiritual stone from uh, the Decatree. 
And to be fair, my brother 3D printed. Yeah, my, my brother 3D printed it. And it, you know, it's just plastic. But um it's, it's cool, man. It's really cool. And it was um it was just not that basically he was just like, I'm gonna get you a wedding gift further down the line, but I just thought I'd get you this just as a, a nice little nerd thing. I was like, oh man, I love like I was really appreciative of it, because especially having played it now, he's he made all three of the Spirit of the Stones and he's got a little um he's got the set, you know, like cool. um with uh, the in the, um, the Temple of Time where they all float on. He's built yeah. that to hold them up as well. Not a massive one. Awesome. Awesome. Just a small little shelf. But um, talking about Ocarina of Time, I, I actually finished it yesterday. Um, I literally... Plays I, tennis with Ganon. Oh. <laughs> so, so it's weird, because like for the last like three weeks, I think the last two or three weeks, I've just been playing Zelda. So I've linked a link between worlds, uh, and then straight into Ocarina of Time, and I'm going straight into Majora's Mask, which I'm very excited for. Because um, I, I have memories of Majora, Majora's Mask, but I don't have like the same kind of memories that I have with Ocarina of Time and that like with Ocarina of Time I knew everything I knew everything apart from a few puzzles here and there uh, I've got a I've got a couple of I don't feel controversial things I feel like they're more revel- revelations rather than controversies here's just one of them to start off with the water temple is not as hard as people make it out to be it's more frustrating you have to stick your boots on and the reason why I figured that out is because on the 3DS you get two screens and you just press on off when it comes to the shoes so with the boots and they just obviously you sink to the ground you just in in the original game you have to press start click them off press start come out but with this one i just go click off click on click off and straight away i'm able to go up and down it's not i and then you doing that i then realized that temple is really not that difficult because I can't remember that temple at all, and I didn't. Didn't have to look... they make it easier though when oh, they did released they? it? Ah, I have a maybe. feeling they made it easier that... because of those complaints. Maybe, maybe that's what it is. It. Maybe that's what it is. I mean, it didn't feel. Doesn't any sound very Nintendo, does it? No, well, <laughs> Nintendo. Well, I... The, I think the easy, the ease might have been the ease of access with the shoes, with the boots. That might right. have been the reason. Uh, but that's, that, the that's the only thing. Is, I think the only thing as well is because like. It, you do have to kind of vaguely, very vaguely plan what you're doing next yeah. as far as temples go. So as soon as you go in and out of that menu a few times, you forget what you were doing. Exactly. I constantly get to, because you have to change the water levels, right? Yeah, You yeah. get to like different oh, levels yeah, and then great. I change the boots enough times and then I'm like, what am I doing? What floor am I supposed to go to again? <laughs> like, I mean, that's because I'm an idiot, but like, I no, but I, I had yeah. the same, I had the same problem, and I didn't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's probably my ADHD, but still, like, it, 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 <laughs> it's, it's still, like, I just go, where am I going? Yeah, um, but um, yeah, it's it's really that that's the first thing I would say. The, the first thing I would say is the water temple. I think is is I can understand if people said it's frustrating totally with them i can see why having to remember where like and the thing is well if you mess up the water levels you got to go back and do it all again and it's like it's a whole process yeah. that is frustrating if there was a way where like you could adjust the water levels just by playing the um zelda's lullaby on the fly because i'm gonna play it anywhere else if you just played it and it just whatever and then just just reset if it just did that every time you played the zelda's lullaby that temple would i i would be like no this temple's fine like it's really not fine in fact i found it quite i i enjoyed it i really enjoyed it um i've really enjoyed the spirit temple um weirdly the temple i enjoyed the least was um the fire temple didn't i yeah i i i just think it was just a bit like i don't know it wasn't that it was bad it's just i was, I was like uh, okay it's a fire temple like yeah and I, I I love the Gorons and I'm glad I saved them all. But at the same time, I was like, it's not. It wasn't my favorite temple. I, 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 I yeah. It's it's difficult as well because you don't really get that much of like. I don't know. For me anyway, I find the fire temple. I would never feel like I'm like emotionally invested in what's going on. I'm always just kind of like, fuck these Gorons, man. Like just <laughs> I, don't, I don't care about any of them. You know. Whereas like with the forest temple, it's like all right. Well, there's Saria. Sorry, there's yeah, all the yeah. there's all these characters that you like have a, an invested thing in. Mm. The water temple, I guess you get Ruto. Yeah, and she's, she's a wife. Ki- and, she's... and she's kind of like, she's kind of kooky and weird, which I quite like. Yeah. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I I really enjoyed the spirit temple and I enjoyed the shadow temple. I'm really, I mean, all of the temples are pretty good. Yeah. And it's not, it's not that I had any issues with any of them. I just thought so... the water temple was better than I remembered. And the uh, fire temple was just meh. That's so all. you jumping straight into Majora's Mask now? I'm literally so I like I said I finished it yesterday. I've had loads of stuff to do, but I'm going to jump straight into Majora's Mask either today or start tomorrow. Um, You've played it before. 
Yeah, yeah I played loads. Okay, of times, okay, like, okay, okay. If if it's one of those things where if I've played Ocarina of Time in the last ten years, I've yeah. done Majora's Mask in twenty years. Yeah, like, yeah. Do you know, it's like I'm, I know I know when it came out twenty years ago, but what I mean is like I can't remember the last. <laughs> You're not that old yet, either. Yeah. <laughs> man, I'm thirty two next week. This is just it's, it's what crank, cranking along. Me and me and Dav Dav weeks. Uh, yeah, tick, man. Tick. Again, oh, our okay. old man video game canes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm really excited to play Majora's Mask. There was a lot of that. I mean, Dav Weeks actually put that in his top three games. I know Zach, you've said before, it's probably up there with what, yeah, your favorite games. It's and great. I'm, and I'm, like I said earlier, I I have so many like memories of Ocarina of Time that I can just flip back and forth from. Whereas with Majora's Mask, there's only like I remember bits, but nowhere mm. near as 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 much as Ocarina of Time. So it's going to be far more of a fresh experience and they've done things to simplify it as well like um because you've got the um I, I, oh you've got yeah. some of the the planning stuff is a lot yeah, easier the planning stuff is a lot and you easier. can change the time and yeah, yeah. it's yeah, a lot it's, nicer to play on 3d they, 3DS, they, they actually. Made it, yeah that's that's what i've that's what i've heard so yeah i'm i one oh one final thing again not i don't believe it's controversial um ocarina of time still stands up maybe the combat is is a bit meh but it the game itself the narrative still stands up and mm. there was moments when i was playing it going i'm i was kind of in all playing it now so i can't I, if i put my 1998 hat on i i can specifically remember being blown away do you know what i mean it's like yeah it, it, it in in the context of now yeah maybe it wouldn't be like the best rated game of all time but like back then i can compl- i can see why it was totally. i can see why it is was rated the best game of all time back in 1998 and I still think it stands up. I mean, I I had a whale of a time. I I love playing it. It was it was great. Uh, but yeah, that that's me. I'm I'm still not Zelda out, and hopefully I'll probably keep playing it until Hyrule Warriors comes out. <laughs> that's the thing. I've still got like three Zelda <laughs> games to go. Um, but yeah, uh, Zach, do you have do you have do you have anything to add? Yeah, no. Well, uh, just a short one. I I picked up after last week. We were talking about um, Minish Cap. I said I wanted to oh, maybe yeah. jump back into oh, it. Oh yeah. Now I'm not very far in because I haven't had loads of time to do it, but I, I jumped into a, the first couple of temples, and um, you know what? Speaking of Zelda games that hold up, it's right up there. It's it's yeah. not the most complex, um, so I think it's. I still agree. I think I still have to say that it is a perfect one to jump into if you've never played a Zelda game. I think it's yeah. a really good start. And the other thing is, it's really cute, man. Like I don't think it gets enough credit for quite how nice it looks. You know, it, it's got the kind of um, it's got kind of like a, a Game Boy Advance version of the Wind Waker graphics. You know, it's got that same yeah, yeah. link design and the same kind of like cartoony and very uh, animated. Everything feels very like uh, lifelike in, in yeah. so much as it can be on a Game Boy Advance game, of course. Um, and uh, like, yeah, it just looks and sounds really unique and, and pretty. You yeah. know, the, mu- the music, man. Uh, there's one track I think is, is it goes a is that from that game or am I thinking of a different no that's game? Link to the Past that's Link to the Past is it Link to the Past yeah that's uh, that? that's like the Lost Woods isn't it or maybe it is maybe it is Lost Woods there's could a, that there... be around in the quiz where you do Zelda music yeah shall I shall I which, <laughs> is which Zelda what song game is this is do, yeah. do. <laughs> that's actually a really good idea for a quiz that's a really good oh, idea oh god maybe, maybe I'll do that next time but yeah because I've never played Minish Cap so do it, play is, it is it's it on really the, uh, easy. Game Boy Advance right it's on Game Boy Advance it's, um, it's, it's super easy um, but it has you know what the other thing is it has some really good items in it mm. uh, it's got the mole mitts which is just like the little diggy hands and you get <laughs> The Gust Jar, which I think is in Skyward Sword. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, it is. Uh, you get, like, um, uh, the, the the Feather, whatever it is. Um, Rock's Feather, so you can, like, do a little double jump. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Oh, that's from um, Link's, uh, Link's Awakening, right? Yeah, Link's Awakening, and yeah, I think maybe the Link's Oracles Link's games, maybe, as well. Oh, yeah. Possibly. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, a simp- it's kind of a simplified, uh, upscaled Oracle of Ages kind of thing. Um, yeah. But like I say, it's way easier. So you can just, like, fly through it and just have a nice little time. Like, I don't yeah. feel remotely stressed playing it. It's just a chilled-out little Zelda game. I, I don't know if I'll finish it, um, but I do remember really liking a lot of the bosses, so I kind of would quite like to play nice. all the way through. That would be fun Yeah, that, if I, I had the yeah. time. I'm really, I'm really, it's weird because I'm really enjoying my, like, talking to you about the Minish Cap is making, like, that's another one I need to add to my list because yeah. I've never played it. I, I, I haven't played the, um, like I said, the, uh, at the Ages, get a, Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. I've played those games and I haven't played the DS games. But I think other than those, I've played all of the other ones. Have you played so, Zelda 2? 
Oh, no, I did play Zelda 1 and 2, but I just... I couldn't. I, I, I just... It's one of those if you things... Play, like, I was going to say, I only ever played Zelda 2 with a walkthrough because yeah, a lot of it is... The, the the thing is the combat's so good it's just that the the game is so stupid yeah so play with a walkthrough and it's really fun that sounds really contradictory but it's true uh, I've got things I actually found my game I said this a couple of months ago but I've actually found my Game Boy Advance last time I went last time I went back to oh, Windows nice. um, so I, I you know I've got I, can, I just need to find a copy of the game and then just, mm. just jump straight into it but um I, again, it was it's weird because I've been playing a lot of Mario recently and I've been playing a lot of Zelda. It really did drive home for me that Zelda is my favorite Nintendo franchise. I know that's yeah. not a surprise anyway, but like, I've loved playing those games like so much. So, like, I've got other stuff that I should be playing. The Mario 3D collection is still haven't finished, but I've completed two Zelda games in that time. You know yeah. what I mean? I haven't, I, haven't st- I haven't put it down. They're big games though, man. I mean, Jesus, imagine finishing. Yeah. How, I, I couldn't finish 64 in like. Yeah, I think it would take me a while. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> All right, then should we um should we move on to it's the quiz, quiz time? Uh, quiz, quiz time, quiz guys. This is just a quiz for two guys. La 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 la. That, that, two guys. Quiz is my favorite, <laughs> Zoom meeting. favorite quiz part of the show. For you guys. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, so again, only ten questions. Uh, let me just write your names down. What's your names? I got it. It's fine. Um, What's your name? <laughs> such a dig. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here we go. Uh, question number one. And again, uh, if you both agree to it, we can get the answer. We can get the four answers. But question cool. number one. Where is Nintendo based in Japan? Ah, uh, this feels like a trick question. You little no cheeky trick. boy. <laughs> um, okay. Yes. I am hazarding a guess. Do you want the four it again? If you, if no. You want... No. Okay. Okay. I'm just gonna say somewhere that sounds plausible because I don't think it's. It can't be. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. No. Oh shit. Okay. It's one of two. I think. All right. All right. Um. Oh whoops! You, I already did it. Yeah. You, it's it's fine. Uh, okay. So on the count of three, here we go. Three, two, one. So we got Dab go. Weeks. Kyoto. No, I said Osaka. Zach said, <laughs> and Zach I, said Kyoto. I went with Kyoto. Oh, well. It is, is it... Kyoto. <laughs> Wait, it is Kyoto. Kyoto. Oh. It was either, it is it was Kyoto. either Kyoto or weirdly I thought it might be Sapporo. Yeah, I don't know um, why I thought that. It's Kyoto, it's Kyoto which I, I, I kind of love that it's not Tokyo. I kind of love that it's, yeah. it's, it's Kyoto. I almost put Tokyo because I was like, that just seems like where I, I would have to be, right? Yeah, but... it's not. It's uh, Kyoto. Um, um, Rosie, to be fair, she she always says to me that she wants to go to Japan, and I'm just like, right, well, yeah. we, I know where we're going. Yeah, um, hell yeah. Oh, okay. Kyoto's lovely as well. Yeah. Have you yeah, been? Have there. you been, Dan? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Man, that's awesome. I didn't I know that. Go. Oh, it's lush. Right, is yeah. that the next Video Games Ahoy uh, trip? We've booked a trip to... Actually, no, we need to go there because we need to go to Nintendo <laughs> World, uh, Mario Absolutely. World. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah, there yeah we go. that's All true. Right. Um, question number two. What is the protagonist's name in GTA 3? So, GTA 3 on uh, the PS2. Ooh. There's a meme about him, right? That's the only reason I know this. <laughs> do you want? Uh, do you want the four answers? Yes. I, yeah. Go on. Okay. I have no idea. Uh, I, I am also really proud of this as well. So it's Jean You've... Claude. It's not Van Damme. Michael Tony. Oh what? John Claude Michael Tony. God, I have okay. no idea. Okay. All right, I'm ready. Right. Here we go on the count of three. Three. Two, one. Dab Weeks, what did you go with? I went Claude. And Zach, what did you go with? I went with Tony. It is <laughs> can't be right. Claude. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I have no idea. Yeah, I literally Claude. but isn't Tony the Vice City guy and Michael's the GTA five guy? That's exactly right. Nice, yeah. yeah. That's exactly right. I have played GTA three, but just not very long. And also to be mm. fair, they don't actually mention his name in GTA three, they mention his name in San Andreas. One of the characters uh, calls him Claude. Oh, okay. Um, that's and interesting. Re- and then he appears and you're like, oh, there's not that's that's, that's that's his name. Okay. There we are. All right, great. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. Question number three. What is the Assassin's Creed logo based on? I got four ans- I got four answers. Do you want them? No, I think I know it. Okay. Oh shit, I don't think I do. Dang it. Um what's it based on? Surely I must have known this at some point. I've got, like I said, I've got four answers for you if you guys want them. I don't think Dad's going to let me have them. Yeah. Have them yeah. Oh, yes, I, can. Um, I want this win. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I don't know. I have no idea. 
I literally have no answer because I don't even know what it could. I don't even know what it could be. <laughs> Throw out a guess. Uh, just because I want to see a funny guess. <laughs> My favorite one was who's uh, the end boss in Street Fighter Two? You just bought the only person I know is Ryu, so that's the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Uh, Dad, Dad, where are you going? A tomahawk. And Zach? That can't be right. I went with the Hashashin symbol, which is... So, the answer is the jawline of an eagle. Oh, okay. really? So is. That's stupid. Yeah, the, the, so the four I had was the Hoods of the Tomahawk. Assassins. Tomahawk is way cooler. Yeah, it's way cooler. <laughs> so the four I had is uh, Hoods of the Assassins, a piece of medical equipment, the pendulum of order and chaos, and then the jaw of an eagle, which is correct. What the hell is the go. Hashashin symbol? Well, or are you so just I, saying I, assassin with a well, Sean no, Connery so accent? assassin com- assass- assassin comes from the word Hashashin, which is a group of people in the Middle East at the time, and it oh. comes from the idea of hashish. It's the people who smoked hashish, but they were also sort of the, the where the it's where the word assassin comes from. Uh, All right, Zach so, Hamilton dropping knowledge. Yeah, Etymolo- etymologically speaking, speaking, yeah. are we saying that assassins are stoners then? <laughs> well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> interesting we all learned something today yeah. uh, alright question 4 according to how long to beat how many hours would it take the player to 100% complete Mario 64 the term used is completionist Whoa. okay so 100% completed so by that I'll just give you the answer in a sense 120 stars that's kind of it you can't really do anything beyond that so 120 stars how long would it take you to get them okay you guys gonna answer yeah, I'm changing mine. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Hundred hours, Zach. I don't remember it. I haven't played it in like fifteen years. Um, Isn't it really long? Dab weeks went with eighteen, and the answer was twenty hours and thirty minutes. So is it really that short? It's really not that long. And I think it only takes. (laughs) (laughs) So okay, so like ten minutes ago, when I said it would take me a week to beat Mario sixty four. I think maybe I overestimated how long that game. Well, is. I just thought you were playing it an hour a day. That's I just thought you were just yeah. putting not putting bad. Which is yeah. usually the pace I would actually yeah. play yeah. that game. M- yeah, me um, too. Okay, question number five. Uh, when was the last game released on the original Game Boy? And bonus points for that game. The last game on the original Game Boy. That's correct. Uh... And does it include the Pokemon Color games? Does it have to be a Pokemon original? Uh, it it, it can be whatever you want it to be. Um, fuck. All right, I'm ready. Got it. You guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Uh, on the count of three. Three, two, one. Okay. 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 So Dab we went with the same with? year, two thousand and one. And Zach Hamilton, two thousand one. So you're both wrong, and you're both wrong Damn. in the games as well. Although Zach was very close, it was Pokemon Yellow in Europe. Basically, it didn't get released until right. two thousand. So you're only a year off. I was close. Pokemon Damn. Yellow. Pokemon Yellow in uh, Europe. Um, all right. Awesome. Question number six. So I enjoyed this last time, so we're doing it again. So which Capcom game with a score of 96 is the highest rated by reviewers on Metacritic? Okay. Um, do you want the four, uh, the top four I can give you in alphabetical order? Or you just kind of a guess? I'm happy to guess this one. So top nine, it's given a 96 and it's a Capcom game. Yes. So it's, it's the top rated Capcom game. Uh, but if you want the four, top top four, I can give you them in alphabetical order. Mm, okay no no i think we'll go for it okay okay on the count of three three okay. two one Ooh. <sighs> dab weeks what did you go with street fighter 2 and zach uh dead rising 2 both wrong Damn. so i'm gonna give you the answers uh street fighter 4 was in fourth place with 94 devil may cry the original was third again with 94 but a slightly higher 94 if that makes sense Number two is going to blow your minds. Number two is The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past on the Game Boy Advance. Wow. They made that for the Game Boy Advance. And it, did. Te- it counts really? on Metacritic. Yeah. That Cap- should not remotely count, given that they did nothing for it. Capcom, uh, Capcom made uh, the um, Oracle games, didn't they, as well? Did they? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah Capcom got a really yeah. good relationship with Nintendo. And number one, 
is Resident Evil 4 on the GameCube. Uh, I yeah. had a fe- oh, you know we what? After- said that. I had a feeling like when I wrote it down, I was like, actually, it might be a Resident Evil game. Yeah, Resident I Evil actually, 4 on the GameCube. I forgot about Resident Evil 4. I was pretty sure it wasn't going to be one of the earlier Resident Evils, so I didn't think about Resident Evil. Yeah, I kind of thought I kind of thought that it might be Dead Rising 2 instead of Dead Rising 1 as like mm. a preemptive thing, you yeah, know, like because yeah. they were expecting it to do so well. Yeah. Because um, that was a, that was a uh, critic uh, score rather than a, a user score, right? It's yeah, this is all critic scores. Yeah. It's interesting that the top two um, best rated Capcom games are both Nintendo games. Or, or yeah. well, I guess Resident Evil Four was a Nintendo game, and then <laughs> it was like the GameCube sold like garbage, and then they were like, okay, this has gone to the PlayStation now. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, question number seven: What is the name of the portable nuclear warhead launcher seen in Fallout? Do you want the four guesses? No, I know this one. Ah, oh, bollocks. I know this, but I can't remember what it is. Uh, it's called something really stupid. If, if it helps, just think of me, okay? I'm joking. It's a joke. It's a joke. Don't think of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, so now I'm getting confused as well because I'm thinking of um, uh, rad roaches. <laughs> yeah, because not, Radford, right? Radford, no, no, don't think of me. No, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. That really it's fucked with joke. me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn send, it. Sending um, you off in a complete different direction here. Oh, it's called something stupid. I think, uh, mm, I'm just going to get this. Okay, go, it. go for it. Go for oh, it. You'll, you'll it. see if you get it. This All is right. from a different game. All right. Um, oh, on I the count of three. Sorry. Three, two, one. The fat boy. Damn it. <laughs> Although Bunker Buster, I'm liking Bunker his name. Bunker Buster sounds it's from, awesome. It's, yeah, it's from Worms. There we are. Oh, oh right, Worms. Okay. Yeah, it's a real thing. I used to love Worms. I love the theme song Worms is Worms great, as well. Man. Do, do, do. It's great. Oh, it's a fucking. Do you want a good little, little Worms Mondays? story? Yeah, yeah, go for oh it. Oh my god, please. Yeah. So, um, the only way I was able to play Worms in my childhood was on my dad's work laptop, and I realized oh, no. that I could replace the windows no I, like opening sound effects with uh sounds from oh worms. my god amazing so my dad went into a meeting and <laughs> was, <laughs> was um yeah absolutely rinsed what, did they, what was the noise colleagues. oh just like you win and yeah. like, <laughs> get back here you little, you little beggar and just stuff these like are, that you these know? are pretty good impressions i gotta be honest yeah, yeah, that yeah. you, you win go. All right. spot on. so let's jump back to the quiz uh dav weeks the answer was fat man but i'm gonna allow you to take fat boy so that's why i said it, it, it just think of me i was it was it was a joke on, on the state uh, of, the current state uh, it was the current state of my lockdown bod um, <laughs> <laughs> all right question you hide it well <laughs> <laughs> question number eight what is the name of the virus in the last of us Ooh. oh uh what why do i not know it's this? not a virus not a virus is it well it's a fungus the, f- what, the, the fungus then let's go with the fungus uh this is a question i stole uh but it is the right answer okay um, i got it okay i mean i think i'm getting this right okay three two one what if i don't press it yeah okay yeah that's yeah. that's right it's uh cord- cordyceps is it is that is it cordyceps. 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 Yeah. There we are. cordyceps is the answer real thing I got yeah, to, terrifying. I, I got a little. I got a little bit freaked out because I was like, "Shit, is there something that I'm just not remembering yet?" <laughs> but it was gonna be like some really complicated that, answer. That's the thing, isn't? It? I hate it when you actually know an answer, but then you start questioning yourself, going, "Is it right? Am I wrong?" It's like, no, I was 100 percent right. Um, right. Question number nine: What year did Nintendo release the Virtual Boy? Shit. <laughs> I love how you just turned to the mic just to say that. Um, oh, I think I oh, maybe I'm think this is close. Big this is shout close. in here. Okay, check a shout, check a shout. I think this is close. Okay, here we go. On the count of three. I don't know, though. I actually don't remember. Three, two, one. Ooh. <laughs> right, do I give <laughs> this score that. to the person with the closest answer, or do I just give it to none of you? None of us. Oh, dear. Okay. This isn't yeah. a tiebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, the answer is uh, 1995. 
Really? really? It's, it's a oh. lot later than you think. It's a lot wow, later. Wow, that's okay. really interesting. It came out just before the Nintendo 64. I was reading about it earlier, actually. Because, what? Um, yeah, the Nintendo 64 came out in 96, I think. So just before the uh, Nintendo 64. Uh, I was reading about it earlier. I can't remember the name. Is it, I think it, oh, I can't remember his name. I don't, I don't want to get his name wrong. But the, the guy who made it, the, Nintendo kind of screwed him over a little bit. Because um, he, he imagined it having more um, to it, basically, than it actually did. And then they, they put it out prematurely and it was terrible and he got and then he ended up uh, being sacked from nintendo and then ended and ended up dying uh by getting run over like god he's not the same didn't he didn't he have a, the he... same guy um have a big hand in making the game boy yes he did i can't remember his name yeah young, young poyos i i don't i don't i don't want to say his wrong name but i think that's his name yeah um, anyway i've read um, about him before i think he's supposed to be pretty cool like in yeah. terms of the, some of the stuff that he contributed i don't remember i'd have to have a, go and have a look yeah some of the stuff that he contributed to uh with nintendo is, is is incredible um all right cool last question question number 10 which of these actors does not voice a character in black ops 3 heather graham jeff goldblum keith sutherland ron perlman <laughs> fuck <laughs> to be fair um, I wouldn't have known this because I I really not, really I hope that Jeff Goldblum has voiced the, voiced the character but uh, he uh, surely um, can't have done uh, bombs f- find a way that's, that's so, it. surely <laughs> not I'm gonna have to yeah <laughs> alright here we go on the count of three three two one you said the bloom but it wasn't the bloom he's in it it was Kiefer Sutherland because he was in World at War um. Yeah. So Keith Sutherland was in World of War, but everyone else was in it. It's crazy. I didn't know that Jeff wow. Goldblum was was Goldblum. Where? In it. I don't know. I haven't played Black Ops Three, but he's in it. Apparently. Okay. He's just Goldblum. Why? I love that term, by the way. Uh, have you guys Gold-blooming. seen Community? I've seen a little bit of Community. There's an episode of Community bit. where one of the main characters, like Gold, is is he's Gold Blooming just by just going, oh, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> That's just, it's like Jeff, you're Gold Blooming. It's great. Watch Community, guys. All right, let's just let's just do the tiebreaker for funsies. Uh, I won't do two points because one of you is a clear winner, and it's not fair, really. Um, this is tiebreaker, uh, just for fun. How many games released on the PlayStation Two? How many games released on the PlayStation Two? Oh my god! Because uh, last last okay. uh, last week had the Nintendo sixty four, which was had like three hundred and sixty, I think it was. How many games released on the PlayStation Two? All right, on the count okay. of three, three, two, one. Ooh. You're going to be surprised by this answer. Is it less than the Nintendo 64? 3,800. What in the world are you talking about? So, See, that I'm is not insane. surprised. 3,000? Like, yeah. Because fuck. The PS2 seemed like every. Like, there was a crazy frog game, for God's sake. Yeah, that's everything true. got, yeah, like, that's everything true. got on PlayStation 2. Yeah. Uh, wow. That is, that is Little it. Little Britain, jackass. <laughs> that is it. That's the end of the quiz. Uh, the, the the winner this week is Dav Weeks with a score Woo! of four. Zach, um, not far behind with a score of two. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> to be it's fair, very, to be fair we've, since we've cut it. off five questions... Like it's not that bad, and like getting getting. And to be fair, some of these are quite hard. I wouldn't have known these unless I saw them. Because sometimes sometimes I come up with the questions on my own, but sometimes I'm just like, I need questions. Let's just find one. Um, all right, let's leave it there, guys. Thank you so much uh, for listening. That is the end of podcast number twenty eight. If you enjoyed the show, then please follow us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Patreon. Tell your friends and give us a review or a comment. It would mean the world to us. Um, we will hopefully be streaming next week and we'll have Dav Gate back as well. Um, we've missed him a lot today uh, with his with his bants. His Dav bants. Um, gents, thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure today. Absolutely. Um, we'll see you next week with Video Games Ahoy. We'll see you soon. Ahoy! Ahoy! Ahoy.